Hello and welcome to the Cook's Pantry. We have bought it on the road and we are in my beautiful hometown of Noosa on the Sunshine Coast. We're down at Sunshine Beach. If you haven't guessed by now, if you haven't seen any of this stuff before, we are at our restaurant, Some Young Guys. And today, we thought we'd throw in a little segment in between our lunch and dinner service. So here I am on a bar top. Now you're gonna to have to bear with me because you might hear dishwashers going, oven slamming, pans dropping because we are in between lunch and dinner. But I'm gonna run you guys through this. It is an incredibly refreshing and light dessert that we had the crowd really asking for when we first opened the restaurant. It's a salted coconut panna cotta, some beautiful passion fruit pulp, a little twist with the Thai basil uh, and a bit of house made honeycomb. So when you're working with gelatin, we've just got some sheets that we've just snapped in half here. So we've got 20 grams for this recipe. I have had to go through and adjust the, the volumes of everything to cut it down to a size where you're not gonna end up with probably 100 <laughs> panna cottas at home. I wouldn't do that to you. So blooming is basically just softening the gelatin and, and getting it to that point where it's malleable and you can work it through and melt it in to a nice warm liquid, which is our panna cotta. And we've got a liter of coconut cream. So tin coconut cream is absolutely fine. So I'm just gonna get the coconut cream in there. We can go in with the two others. Obviously a little bit of sugar, dessert. You want that little bit of sweetness. So we've got 230 grams of caster sugar and salt. Now, I don't know the scientific explanation for it, but for some reason, coconut loves a little bit of salt. I think one of my favorite desserts or little sweet treats of all times is a bounty. And it's got that kind of coconutty, chewy texture on the inside, which is addictive. So that was the thought process behind adding a little bit of salt into the panna cotta mix. And I think salt is really becoming quite a common ingredient these days in desserts, absolutely. It just helps to balance everything out and, and I guess soften the blow so you don't have sweetness straight up and, and through and through. So we've got the coconut cream in there. Get that coming up to a, a simmer. Hopefully by then, gelatin will be nice and soft. Get that in and melt it. And then in all honesty, we just start to portion them up and then uh, make it all restaurant and fancy with a few of the other condiments. Okay, so the coconut cream has started to Come up to a bit, of, a bit of a simmer. Mind my gigantic whisk, that is what we have in the kitchen. That's what we use here. So, as you can see here, the gelatin, is it, it's really gone like a little jelly itself. So what we wanna do, just squeeze any excess. Don't squeeze it too hard, because it'll start to fall apart. Just any excess water. If you put too much water back in there, it's gonna change the ratio, and the gelatin might not have enough power to get that to set. So just a little squeeze, get any excess out, and then we're just gonna whisk that through. Give that you know, a really good generous wish. You wanna make sure it's all melted. Otherwise, you won't get the, uh, the true effect of the gelatin and your panna cottas won't set. And I always used to be quite fearful of panna cottas and, and not knowing the ratios and get them and sometimes there'll be too much gelatin. It'll be like a bouncy ball and then you won't, you won't have enough in there. It won't set enough. So it really is a fine line. And if you have the right recipe, it has got to be one of the simplest and most approachable desserts to put together, especially if you've got mates coming over. So the gelatin will be well and truly mixed through that, but we want to make sure that we don't pass on any solids from that mix into our panna cotta. So we are going to strain it off. and I've got my <laughs> giant strainer here. So in we go, and that's just going to ensure that we don't pass on any, any solids, which could potentially be uh, a little bit of gelatin. Sometimes if you're cooking things in a saucepan, you can get that little bit caught on the base of the saucepan. And it really is as simple as that. All we gotta do now is find some molds. Quiet on set. I'm only joking. <laughs> All right, so we've got, we've got our molds sorted. I'm gonna give you guys two different options. So you can get these molds. Uh, you find them in your homeware stores, your, your kitchen, kitchen wares. If you don't, another really cool way to do it, and you've, everyone's got them, bowls at home. Whatever you're gonna serve it in, pour it straight into that. It just saves a lot of mucking around. You don't need to pop them out. It's basically a set and forget. So that's probably the best option. You're having a dinner party, you wanna knock this up. Um, set them in what you're gonna serve it in and then just dress it over the top with your passion fruit, your Thai basil, whatever it is you're gonna do, but that's always a good idea. All right, so here we go. It really is as simple as this. We're just gonna pour it in whatever sort of serve that you're going for, just to really get that texture absolutely spot on. You can see at the top here, there's, there's a little bit of bubble action happening. So just a little, as much as you can. You don't wanna break the bowl. Just to make sure that you get at least anything that's in the mix, you want it to come to the top. So you don't want it to be aerated and bubbly right in the middle because you want it that silky texture. That's what the panna cotta is all about. Distribute the mix amongst the rest of these molds. And in order to get your gelatin to its full capacity, you want to give it 24 hours in the fridge. You can get away with it if you want to 
give it four to five. They, they will be set, but in order for, it, for the gelatin to, to really do its job, you need to give it 24 hours and it's gonna give you the best possible texture because when you pop them out, it should almost be collapsing on its own weight. That's the sort of panna cotta texture and that's when you know you've nailed it. So I'm just gonna portion these up. These are about 150 to 200 mils. So that gives you an idea as to how long you need to leave it. All right, done. A little bit left over. Put that in a couple of little takeaway containers. Have some coconut panna cotta as a little brekkie option. Coconut panna cotta on the base of a takeaway. Granola, fresh fruit over the top laughing. So I'll lock these away in the fridge, leave them for a few hours. We are going to cheat it because we haven't got 24 of them. Uh, and then I'll come back and I'll show you guys how to dress them up. Now I'm sure you guys have all heard the term the smoke and mirrors of television. This is an example at its best. These were a batch of the coconut panna cottas that the boys knocked up yesterday, so they're in fine form. But we're in between lunch and dinner. We obviously weren't gonna have that 24 hour period to let the gelatin do its thing. So here we are. Still gonna go through that daunting process of popping one out to see if we pulled it off or not. So a uh, highly technical tool that we use throughout service in order to remove the panna cotta. A thermometer spike of all things. And I'll show you how simple it is. Just in there and around. Look at the wobble on that. Absolutely nailed it. Now, in order to keep it exactly the same, and this is how we serve it on the menu in this building, we've just got some beautiful fresh passion fruit pulp straight out of the top, a nice generous hit of that, and some Thai basil. Now, when we were playing around with this combination, we, we wanted a coconut dessert. The people wanted something refreshing, and using Thai basil, it's, it's definitely Again, one of my favorite ingredients. It got the most amazing fennelly flavor to it and it just works so well. And just is that little bit of, oh, what's that? It's, it's that interesting kind of flavor in there that, that works so well. Dress it up. And the final player in this game, honeycomb. Now, when you're thinking about dishes and, and in particular sweets, especially a panna cotta because of the, the texture of that, it is so soft and silky. It needs a little bit of crunch something to just combat it and balance out that, that textural interest of the dish. So good old honeycomb. And we take this one just a little bit darker, just for that little bit of bitterness. So just a couple little cracks of that. And you can find there are billions of honeycomb recipes, whether you go on the, what's that thing? Google. Google's got plenty of honeycomb recipes floating around. So just a couple little hits of that, grab the last piece, give it a good sprinkle. And there you go, a little restaurant dish. Uh, made on a bar top with an electric cooker. And I'm telling you, serve that up to your mates with your next dinner party, knock them dead.